the string. So the total mobile is the bank total. You can get real time broadcast of eight power. You take the data, but uh, not possible. Okay, thanks. Good afternoon, all. Uh, I'm Chetan Bandra, second year PhD student uh, working under mentorship of Professor Bishar. So I will be presenting uh, how uh, the cell phone uh, communication network are used for the measurement of rainfall. So today's talk, uh, the ideas presented are not my own or neither I am an expert, uh, but I found it interesting to discuss. So I will be presenting. Yeah. So as sir, uh, uh, the first paper was published in Science, the Environmental Monitoring by Wireless Communication Networks, the work from Israeli group. Uh, around the same time, there was uh, another publication from the uh, Netherlands group on the same time. So in this talk, I will be discussing these two uh, recent review papers published in 2018 and 2019, where they discuss the current status and challenges of the commercial micro network. Oh, one in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Oh. So the same group uh, carried the okay. projects in Sri Lanka and based on uh, There was one startup named Climase uh, in US. Uh, they try to use the same method for the now passing purposes, uh, which news was published in Nature in 2017. Uh, that startup is known as tomorrow.ic today. The method we used was the path and area integrated rainfall measurement by microwave recognition, uh, kind of published in 1977 from NCAR. Yeah. And I will discuss the another case study published in 2014. This is the work from Poland group. And some people, again, that Netherlands group is trying to use this method for now customers. So what are the current uh, other rainfall measurement techniques? So we know there are rain images, satellites, radar. So this figure shows the locations of uh, all the uh, weather stations of IMD across India. So rain images are basically a point measurement, whereas satellite and radar show the spatial distribution of rainfall. So in this figure, all the locations of uh, IMD weather radars are shown. Uh, I have chosen the Nagpur weather radar, uh, which shows the uh, 24 hour accumulated rainfall on 10th September at 8.30 a.m. So we can see the heavy rainfall occurring in this region due to ongoing LPS. So each technique has its own limitation. And the aim is to have the accurate uh, spatial distribution maps of the range. So what is microwave? Uh, we know uh, in electromagnetic spectrum, the microwave has the frequency from some few gigahertz. The wavelength is around few microns to some 10 centimeters. So in uh, cell phone communication networks, these microwaves are used. Uh, so technique is based on basically uh, whenever there is a microwave signal transmission happens between two antennas for the communication purpose between means transferring data from one antenna or one tower to another tower. So that part is called as microwave linear. And the frequency used are generally 1 gigahertz to 50 gigahertz. Now what is the principle? Now let's say we have these two towers and the rainfall is happening and there is a microwave signal transmission. Now, due to rainfall, uh, there is an attenuation in the signal. What is attenuation? Attenuation is the gradual loss in the signal strength or we can say power, which happens because of scattering and absorption due to uh, rainfall drops. Now, this time dependent magnitude of attenuation uh, can be estimated. It is the well known relation and can be converted into the path average rain rate. So, how much rain is 
as one over this part can be estimated. So let's see the math. So this is the power law model uh, presented in 1977 paper, where uh, K is the rain induced specific attenuation of microwave signal. And R is the rain rate. Basically, this relation is used for designing of the microwave beams. So now to get the total attenuation, we can just uh, line integrate that relation over the one tower to the another tower. So we get this relation. Uh, basically, attenuation can be represented in logarithmic space as a difference between power received when there is no rainfall event and uh, power received when there is any power. And this relation can be rearranged. This basically shows it's the Lambert Weir's law of exponential extension. extension. Now, this relation 3. Uh, can be, uh, uh, now, to get the rainfall from the total attenuation, uh, we have to invert this relation. The problem is this exponent uh, d, but uh, it is well known that the, uh, from the relations derived, this d is approximately equal to 1, so can be taken out from integration sign. We will get k bar, just dividing by the microwave name. k bar is c r to power d and can be inverted to get the rainfall. So for telecommunication engineers, this K is the noise in their data, but now this K is the signal for the meteorologist to get the rainfall. And this A and B are dependent on the microwave radiation's frequency, polarization, the end of temperature, and to certain extent, extent uh, the size of the raindrops. So now in this plot, uh, authors have shown that the, how uh, K and R fits varies with the frequency, different frequencies. So these dashed lines are the fits, whereas these dotted lines are the standard recommendation from the International Telecommunication uh, Union. And each dot represents the aggregated drop counts for the one minute. Uh, this drop site were measured in Germany in 2013 and 14, from April to September. So we can see that this A with the frequency is increasing in 0 0.0, 0 0.546. So it basically tells us that higher frequencies experience the higher attenuation. If we keep the rainfall amount same, what that basically means with the higher frequencies, the path length decreases, sorry, wavelength decreases. So it just easily interacts with the raindrops, which causing the more attenuation. And second thing is this V in all these relations is nearly equal to one, which uh, allows us to accurately calculate the Path average rain rates. And this last figure shows the uh, some data relation for the between reflectivity and rainfall rate for the data, but they have not mentioned for which frequency they have plotted it. So basically, point is the for data, just like in microwave links, we see that there is a relation, a linear relation holds true, but for data, so the reflectivity is highly dependent on the rainfall, raindrop size. Now, this is the first work that was published in 2006 from the LA group. So, basically, they conducted the study uh, at two locations in Israel, Tel Aviv and Haifa. Uh, during the rainfall event was 19 to 20 January, 24 hours. And they plotted the time series of rainfall intensity versus, yeah. So basically, these dashed lines are the rain rate measured by rain gauges. Solid lines are cellular links. Dotted lines are the weather data. So we see uh, from the correlation for 15 minutes, for rain gauges, the time interval was. Measuring time interval was 30 minutes, 
for CMN it was 15 minutes. Whereas at Thayapa, it's 10 minutes and 15 minutes. So for 15 minute interval, they have calculated the correlation of the CMN with rain gauges. And they found that it is uh, 0.86 and for hourly interval is 0.9. Whereas the correlation of CMN with the radar uh, for 15 minute time interval, it is 0.81 and for hourly time interval, it is 0.85. And just to compare how the rain gauges uh, correlation between rain gauge data and the radar vary. So from the literature, they reported that uh, if there is a special distribution of rain gauges is at three kilometer, radar uh, derived rainfall correlates as these values. Now we see here um, in rain gauge data uh, is. The, the link data that just because of the location on uh, how those ranges are located. So this is the movie. So Haifa is somewhere to the north of Israel and Tel Aviv is south and both are the coastal cities. Haifa is not in this graph. This contour shows the topography and the elevation of that location. The second work I will be discussing is from the Poland group published in June 2024, uh, where their aim was to study up to what extent specification derived CMN attenuation can be used uh, for now casting in now casting model. So the location is here in the Poland. Uh, this the lines show the CMN length, whereas the triangle shows the location of uh, manual drain gauges. They have plotted uh, the length of sublink frequency. So we can see uh, for the shorter, yeah, for the shorter microwave release, frequency is higher. So that basically used for the communication over shorter distances. And for smaller frequencies, uh, microwave length is higher, which is generally used for communication over longer distances. So the data they used is obviously for the PML derived 15 minutes, then manual drain gauges 24 hours, uh, telemetric drain gauges 10 minutes, uh, from the radar 10 minutes. They used the uh, human sat, uh, satellite series, uh, which is indirectly they calculated from this NWCS program for the 10 minutes uh, temporal resolution and the special resolution is 5 km by 6 km. And they just combine all this data from manual drain gauges, telemetric drain gauges, and radar, satellite to get some estimate, which is reported at 10 minutes in special resolution, 1 km by 1 km. In this plot also, this color map shows the topography and elevation of this location. So results are, uh, so here they have plotted the time estimated rainfall over a period of one month. Uh, they consider the manual language at the of the location as a reference. This black line is the CML data, then this violet uh, telemetric language. So more, we can observe this uh, satellite data over this period is completely out of this range. It's, it's nowhere close to any one of this. So again, they calculated the correlations. Uh, first, using the manual rain gauge data, means uh, the correlation between manual rain gauge data and radar, telemetric rain gauge data and manual rain gauge data, this way. So they found that uh, the correlation highest for the radar data then the telemetric range data, then the CML, and satellite is burst uh, in giving the rainfall distribution. And second, they calculated using multi source system estimates, GRS, which is generally used for the off now casting purposes. And again, correlated with the radar, CML, telemetric range data, and satellite. Again, here also, the satellite is the worst. Um, they use some techniques to map the point measurement of rain gauge or the 
line measurement of CML over this area. So I am not touching that part how they have done it. So first is the uh, before quality control CML data after quality control. Uh, the manual engages multi source estimate, then telemetric engages radar in satellite. So we can see that the manual engages with this location uh, has very good representation with the radar data, but satellite doesn't show anything, it's completely out. Uh, CMA has some signal, but from correlation point, radar is better. Now coming to the challenges, obviously as server has told, biggest challenge is the getting the data from these private companies, private network operators. The second thing, let's suppose one group has this data available in Europe, but due to the laws and regulations of different countries, they can't share the, the data with the other people. Second is noisy raw data. What that means, let's say we have these two towers, there is a rainfall happening, but we know that along with the rainfall, let's say a thunderstorm, there is a lot of uh, winds also blow, which can raise the dust in the environment and which can give the false signal. Since the actual rain is less than the attenuation due to dust may be higher, which is the false signal. Another limitation is wet att uh, antenna attenuation. So the, whatever rain is happening, that raindrop just gets collected on the antenna here itself on the tower. So which may give uh, again overestimation of the rainfall uh, because of uh, attenuation happening on the antenna itself. So to conclude, we say that radar rainfall has the best representation of spatial distribution of rainfall field. And we can use the rain cages to correct the bias from the radar. And the satellite gives us uh, can be used as a supplementary means it's a supplementary when there is no availability of data just to get the idea and finally we can add this tml to have accurate special distribution now the challenge is to how to validate this thing is that's the biggest challenge because we have limited language service now uh, this is the figure from 2023 paper where they have shown this uh, at what places around the world this work is being done. Surprisingly, in India, I may be wrong, I'm not aware. Uh, there is no any work. Most of the work is from European countries, uh, Israel, China, and these European groups have done some work in here, South America, Africa, Sri Lanka. Uh, I have just taken from IMD website the location of uh, the gauges in the back of the loop. And this photo shows the location of Airtel network providers top around IIC campus. So again, getting the data is very tough, but it can be a very good project to find the rainfall distribution across IIC campus. But the challenge is where to put the rain gauges to validate the our results because IIC campus is tree covered at most of the places. And if we put at the terraces, so there will be wind induced errors. And to end the discussion, can we think of uh, each smartphone as a rainfall sensor? Means each smartphone is getting the signal from the tower and there is attenuation happening because of different reasons, let's say rainfall, but uh, it's very dynamic thing means we are just going in the open area inside the room. So getting uh, attenuation what when where, where we are that uh, comparing it with whether it's happening because of rainfall or not, that's the tough thing. So seems like it's a science fiction right now, but it can be possible. Thank you. And then you have to be a lot of traffic. I can think of a lot of rainfall. You will work with uh, all these guys, and the anyway, you are locating the signal for traffic purposes. You don't know what you're going to do. I don't know why they're not doing it.
I think somebody should tell that. Anybody else have a question on this? Yeah. Uh, I think there have been some attempts where rather than looking into original inquiries in the publication, there have been radars based uh, over Delhi and Bangalore and also in Moga. So this one was done in 2014. Besides data was taken, and other than looking at horizon Delhi, we have taken satellite to our television system, but we have not project based that. And some work was seen, but as you said, reliability again seemed to be a great, great problem because the land lane and also the angle created and also difference in rain in the land lane caused a lot of problems. So that again remains a problem to be solved. But yeah, that has been done in India, but still we want much of reliability issues. Okay, thank you. Okay, so things are going smoothly in the months of this year. So nothing really much to discuss here, except remind you that August was 18% above normal. Sorry, August was 15% and September 10 days, 18% above normal. And whole season is 8%, okay? Now, I want you to look at a comparison with last year and this year, okay? And I've chosen the core mountain area, which is uh, somewhat uniform. What do you see that up to this point, I would say somewhere here, pretty similar, okay? Below normal rainfall because of the late onset over central India and then a few ups and downs. And then after that starts the main difference, especially after this, that's August 1st. August 1st, we had plenty of pretty heavy episodes of active monsoon, which was missing here. And if you just count the number of days when the rainfall or the uh, core monsoon exceeded one sigma, you have little every day. I must go back and check the data and I am see how many years did this uh, daily rainfall exceed uh, one sigma and core monsoon zone. And look at the number of days it went three sigma, okay? One, two, three here, okay? And two sigma, many more days. So it's remarkable August, exactly opposite of the last August. Okay? And they still don't have any understanding of why. To me, I have not seen anyone talk about why there was a break last August. So far, nobody has talked about it. Uh, this year is exactly opposite last year in August. Let's see whether there any hypothesis there. But the other interesting point which really surprised me is I plotted the August district wise. Sorry. Cumulative, this is where it's made for. And how many I don't look at it, it's too small, okay, no number than that. But to compare with the recently published paper, comparing a 10 year average JJ years, you look at it. I'm really amazed. So, what we say, this pattern is now more common in this decade. Okay, that's what tells me that this side is heavy, this side is down the pattern. And we, have, we know the thing that it, having a long term decline in rainfall very much. Even Northeast, of course, goes opposite of Indian normally. But this pattern is remarkable. And I have no simple hypothesis as to why in the last decade this happened, except we had three years of Lanina. I wonder how much effect it has. So, trouble is, when you do decadal mean, the impact of few years will be there, whichever year is extreme. So I wonder whether the three years of Latina had shown the signature. Otherwise, I don't know how they can get such a similar signature. It's worth looking at it, whether the last decade was very unusual. Now, the other unusual part of this year's uh, rainfall is the difference between east, north, east, and south. Exactly opposite. We are always above normal, we are always below normal. Again, something I have not seen in the earlier years. Now, the funny part is, we are not yet, not only come to La Nina, we are just crossed to minus 0.08. I mean, this is amazing. The La Nina is not there. It may still come in September, somewhere here. So, I would declare this as neutral here, more or less. Unless something is remarkable. But yeah, even something. And you have in the next 15 days, JJS will not be minus 0.5, right? So you won't call it as 
non enough. So this is a neutral behavior. So that's what you want to examine the context of alienating neutral uh, scenario. And now let's look at the forecast for the next. Uh, so this is the last week, and then the next week. This is uh, uh, a lot of potential from the loan by fabric for last scale in this one. And uh, you can see that when you looked at about it from the previous day, I think MJO put across uh, and then went like that. So that's why you got all the rain. And coming week, uh, looks like the middle of September, you will have uh, a descending mode over India. And the next week, the next two weeks may not be as good as before. Okay? And this is the Carl website, very interesting. He resolved all these various boards, MKO, Lower Kelvin, and Equator of and so on. <clears throat> okay, you can look at it. And this is his uh, indication of total water vapor. What happened the last three days here? And then, of course, we have, we have gone past it. This is 10th September, only on uh, 11th today. And uh, so today, today, as we also saw this depression in uh, integrative plane giving rain. Now, what's the forecast for the next uh, uh, 15 days? Very similar. I'm impressed by how close they are. So they only put in rainfall here, primarily. Okay. And very similar to a minor increase here. And something here will be below normal. Uh, and uh, so I think September is going to be normal, definitely, if this forecast is correct. Now, again, I want to show you uh, the information from the IMD website. This is for GFS model. This is the rainbow that has occurred over, I think, uh, Andhra Pradesh, wave in depression, which caught here. What surprised me that the five-day forecast was quite poor because it did not show any indication like this, this is a heavy rain, but not this is extremely heavy rain, not uh, normal rain, heavy rain. So it shows that the IMD observation and the forecast from GFL is not that good for heavy rain. Not surprising, heavy rain is always tough to forecast. But surprisingly, I looked at the authors showed what NQM does, that is the model run by NPRWF, they are much better. So, I don't know, we know the difference. Why NQM should be better than uh, GFS? I don't know. Is it the ocean model? Yeah, they have one huh? They have ocean model. Even the atmosphere model is also different than the GFS. Yeah, but the resolution is same as better. Team NQM is better than GFS. Okay, thank you. But I'm really impressed that NQM, five days in advance, they got it right, and it persisted. All the way. Okay. So that surprised me. That is for the rainfall on uh, 9th September okay. last, last week. Now, one more example I took up. This was for, uh, sorry, I think. Uh, six, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, thank you. I think let me check. That, that thing is blocking it and I would remove it. Yes. Let's see. Again, you can see that NQM forecast is maybe the same thing. I don't know, maybe I made a mistake. Okay, I have two, two examples. Maybe I put the same thing by mistake. Okay, then I looked at 1 to 9 September uh, skill score. This is only for day one forecast. Uh, it should be very good, but it's not. The probability detection is 0.26 in GFS and 0.43 in NQM. NQM is always better than GFS, obviously. Now look at the fourth alarm of data, shocking. They are predicting rain when it is not raining, okay? And this is much higher than this. So to me, this shows that NQM is superior to GFS, but I don't know why. If somebody can figure out why NQM is better, I won't like to know. Okay, this is for Mohit. He asked the last time a question about lows. So this is from a uh, well-known book, Why We Don't, I think none of you read it. It's, it's available on the internet. So the rule is, 
They say, what shows isobar? They don't tell you that isobars are two hectopause scale separated. That's important if you are saying many surfaces. So we have one system whose center is two hectar below the outside. It's a low. It's two, the depression, and it's four is strong. Okay. And corresponding speed is used. That's the standard practice. Now I want to continue what is our last time. It always bothers me that people look at climate models with a very large drive-by for long term and predict the future. Okay. And uh, in spite of all the uh, warnings people give. So now I'm a very good paper on this. Uh, one is a review paper on bias correcting climate change simulations, and the other is assumption bias assumption in models. So they're all saying that you cannot assume uh, that the model biases are independent of the state. That's a thing people make when you have a dry bias on the monsoon, you subtract it out and show nice results. And uh, you think it's okay. It's not okay because very often that bias that you have has an impact on how the model responds. Okay? And that, if you are convinced that the bias is not affecting the prediction of the future, that's okay. But people don't do that. And to me, Indian models is the best example. If you're Model like CFS B2, the mean rainfall is about 20% below the observed. Okay? That means the heating in the atmosphere is 20% below. Okay? So, how will it behave in the future? You can't trust. Okay? Unless there's some other compensating error. You got your mean monsoon wrong, very little chance to get your future prediction correctly. Okay? Now, just to give an example, not a monsoon, I was going through another example. This is what I'm going to talk about. This is what interests me right now because I'm um, providing some lectures for this. So this is the model predicted increase in the Arctic sea ice. Okay. This is the mean from many IPC model. This is the actual observable cyclone. Okay. Huge bias. You see. Yeah, they are both are decreasing. Huge bias. Of course, the interannual variation is not very large. Yeah, that's because this is a multi-model mean. This is a single data. Naturally, you can't expect that. That's okay. But to me, I would not trust the decrease in these models with observation because there is a 2 million kilometer squared difference in the conditions in Southern and the first part of the day. Okay? You have such a large difference, unless you know why it is occurring, you cannot trust what will happen because your model is showing in some demand or most of the time, 2 million square kilometers more ice than the observed. Okay? You should know why, before you subtract the mean and compare it. Okay? But this is what people show. I show it this way, most people show it this way. Okay? You use one scale here for ITCC, you use one scale for this one, looks beautiful, and you are thrilled. Okay? But you will be surprised the model will not correct, uh, predict when articles are completely disappeared. Because some physics is Wrong. The people are examining it, not the issue has been bothering a lot of people because two million square kilometers is not a small amount. Okay? After all, we cannot blame it on our resolution. Two million square kilometers is very large. This way can drive. So, quite clearly, there is some problem with the altitude of the ice or the heat transfer between uh, water and ice. Something is wrong in the model, and it is true all models. It's not a matter of one guy. <laughs> Everybody is learning it now. So they have to fix it. They cannot do bias correction and carry on. Okay? So this you can talk to a lot in people who look at climate change. Then you cannot blindly project model output until the model gets the important results correct in the present climate. For us, it is the rainfall. For our guys, it is the extent of the ice. Both are elements. Okay. Okay. Now I want to have a lighter way. All of you use data to pre uh, correlation. Our subject is full of correlation, okay? Most of them are not relevant. So I thought you should know about it. There's a nice website in which uh, Tyler Wigan has 25,000 two variables of them, okay? All kinds of variables, okay? And he correlates every one of them. Okay, today, with the access to a computer, you can do this kind of crazy, crazy work. But he has done something useful. 
go to the website, very interesting. He gives an example to show how correlation means nothing. Here's an example. This is the divorce rate in paint in USA, and it correlation with consumption of margarine, which is a kind of butter, okay? Perfectly correlated. You can go to and get 0.9 something, okay? There's no meaning. Okay. So be careful about correlation. Even 0 0.9, 0 0.9 means nothing. It's purely an association. And the reason I think that you read any number of creatures in our field, they keep using this without thinking. They have no hypothesis. They are not able to say why they are They are quite happy. Now I can tell you, in other fields, other than us, it is banned. In, in uh, learning you done, you cannot talk about uh, natural percent, uh, what do you call it, uh, level of You cannot talk about it. Because biology is like all fields, full of all kinds of correlations, and they mean nothing. So they decided not to have it. Well, we should follow that rules. Because the telling people by natural percent, is in the false sense of uh, agreement. Okay? If you don't have a hypothesis, we don't know what exactly the process from A to B, you cannot do it. Okay? So, a very good website, if you look at it, here is getting 0.9 to ask for 0.985, which I never see in our field. He never gets it. Okay? And there is no connection between them. Okay? So, the nice website, I want all of you to do it as a good case. Okay? Yeah. I don't see they are not connected. Huh? These two, these two are a previous one. Does not say they are not connected. They are totally totally connected. Still, because finding one of them can be. It all depends on the economy and some yeah. business. They can still be connected because. Yeah, but first and foremost, mechanism. What I'm trying to say is that two yeah, directly correlated. That doesn't prove anything, right? Yeah, Unless you have. Even, I'll not get another. Can go to the website. There's another example, uh, which I like to remember. Sales of ice cream and modern day. Highly modern day. Okay? You know why? So the country. We all know the go crazy. <laughs> so there's a connection. But show the connection. So that comes again. I want you to look at it. It's also fun to understand because all of you are going to have a lot of data. It's a time of AI, ML, and everything. Now, what a junk is being published, you have to clear all the junk and understand all the real sickness. Okay? Yeah, so that's over. So, who is next week? Uh, yeah, okay. So, we'll be next week then, and then we'll be one more week left. Thank you. Sir, yeah. The ICP government. Uh, why is not the starting point the same? Why? Why is starting point not the same? Why is the starting point not the same? What do you mean, sir? No. See, we have data only from 79. There's no other choice. See, in the case of Arctic CI, we have data only from 1979. Okay. So that uh, data is very You can imagine. You want to come to the area of the Arctic CIs? Before the satellite era, they went by ships. It's very inaccurate. So only a few people give data before 79. That data is only this is. The reason I'm comparing is that 6.5 million square kilometers is very accurate. So that's why my microwave can make accurate. Before that, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Anybody online? Nobody. <laughs>